on this special edition of SVK, where we're going to be pushing the boundaries on what farm to table can be, featuring indigenous inspired recipes. Hi, my name is Nancy Ma. I'm a nutrition services consultant here at Cisco Canada. I'm joining you live today from my home here in Erin, Ontario. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which I'm broadcasting from is part of the treaty lands and territories of the Mississaugas of the New Credit. The town of Erin is reminded that the land on which we live and work is steeped in rich Indigenous history and is home to many First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and other global Indigenous people today. March is Nutrition Month, and it's led by Dietitians of Canada, and it's celebrated coast to coast. This year's theme is exploring ingredients for a healthier tomorrow for all Canadians. What better way to celebrate this theme than by reconnecting with traditional food practices from the Indigenous community? There are many benefits to Indigenous food practices that we can all apply to our lives. These recipes we're featuring today focuses on incorporating local ingredients. If you enjoyed today's content, join us again on March 24th, where we'll be diving further deeper into this topic, featuring Holly Fortier, who is an Indigenous awareness trainer, filmmaker, actress, and advocate. Registration information will be linked below, so be sure to check it out. So joining me today on the show is Chef Brent Durick from Cisco Kelowna. Welcome, Chef. Good morning. How's everybody today? Well, it's nice and warm over here for me, so I'm having a great start to my Monday morning. Oh, it's beautiful here today, even though it's eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't have as much of an early start as you, Brent, so I'm <laughs> I, I'm, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a quick land acknowledgement. So Cisco, BC, so we acknowledge that all three Cisco, BC locations operate on the traditional ancestry territories of the Kwekwetlam territories and the Silex Okanagan Sawneys people. We say these words as an act of recognition and honor of the indigenous people who lived, worked, and historically on this on whoops on this present day land. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Always. You're a seasoned star here, so. Well, I don't know about season, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you have for us today? So today we're starting right out of the gate. Something quick and simple. Um, three sisters soup. Now, when we talk indigenous food across our nation, across Turtle Island, um, as most of you know that Turtle Island doesn't actually go by boundaries. So Turtle Island is all of North America. So that's why I picked this, uh, I picked this particular dish. It's called Three Sisters. Three Sisters is basically squash, bean, and corn. Now I love this story just for the fact that those three, those three vegetables grow together. They were planted together, they grow together, they help each other grow. The squash stays close to the ground, covers the, covers the root, keeps the bugs and stuff away, where the corn grows super tall and tough, tough stalk, which gives the bean itself a place to wrap around and grow itself as well. They all pretty much mature at the same time. So you can use them. And what they would do is they would take this soup, they would dice it up, mush it up, put it into a pot, and they would build it from there. It was, it's an absolutely amazing story. I've just got a little, little onion, some carrot. I'm gonna put some uh, part of my three sisters in here, which is the squash. That's amazing. You're really giving me some uh, ideas for when I plant my garden this summer. We're starting to um, buy some seeds for the, the summertime. So thank you so much. It's so interesting, all these stories, because there's so much history that goes on with the Indigenous community. So I'm, I'm so happy to be doing this um, episode today. It is, uh, it's pretty fun uh, learning a little bit about histories about food. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I know everybody seems to... Uh, understand Italian food or 
Greek or Chinese, like there's lots of ethnicity that people understand. And, and when it comes to indigenous, everybody gets confused because they don't know what exact, exactly indigenous food is. And I'll always come up with the same thing is like, we were the original farm to farm to fork or forest to forest to table. We were the foragers of the world, right? So we we're the, we're the first ones to do it and do it well. And then all of a sudden hipsters came in the world and it became, it became popular, right? Well, this just might be the perfect timing to bring this, you know, cuisine back to the front of stage, right? Where right now with young people really interested in sustainability and with the rising food costs, I think eating local and, you know, choosing your ingredients wisely is another way to kind of combat that. So thank 100%. you, Chef Brent. 100%. I believe, uh, you know, and I think the pandemic probably pushed this more than anything the amount of people that started to grow gardens. You know, they had a little bit more time. They were a little bit more interested in things like that. So, you know, you, you drive around the neighborhood and you see more and more people planting gardens or planting flowers, just having time outside and, and learning, learning things like this, I think is, is super important. You yes. know, understanding what grows well in your, in your region brings in the sustainability of the food that you're going to eat. The closer, the, the better it grows in your, in your area, the easier it is for you to grow and, and sustain yourself on it. Right. Yeah. And just reconnecting back to the earth and the land again as well. It's not just good for, you know, our like physical health, but it's all, I think also good for our like mental health, being able to be outside as well. Exactly. So what I've got on the go here, I've got a, a bit of a base of a soup. So I've got my carrots, my celery, my onions. I've got my squash in there. I've got some roasted corn um, just to be a little different. It's coming to a boil now. I'm going to put, uh, I love beans in it. I know pole beans, which is what I have diced up right here. Um, I know they're going to be more of a traditional thing, but a black bean that I have here, you could use a, a black eyed pea. You could use a kidney. You could any kind of bean that grows. And, and a lot of beans are pretty native to, to the lands. I like them because it adds a little bit more protein and mm -hmm. gives a, a little bit of depth to the soup. So it's, it makes it a little bit heartier. So we bring that together. I'm going to take a little bit of my pole bean as well. Cause I like the color. They're going to get that nice green in them. This is a very colorful soup you have here. It is lots of textures. That's what I love about it. It's going to turn around. It's going to give you lots of bite, lots of uh, interesting flavors. And it's something that you can put on in the morning and reheat over and over and over. And it's just going to get better and better and better. So a little bit of that, I'm going to put the, a little bit of seasoning in here. I don't go crazy on the seasoning just because uh, we don't want to go overboard. I want all the flavors from the vegetables to sing. So this is going to be a really, really rustic version of this soup. I'm sure the smell is coming out into your kitchen by now. It's going to wake my kids up pretty soon. <laughs> I wish I was in your kitchen so I can, I can have some of that for my lunch. So we're going to let that simmer just a tiny bit um, through the magic of, of television. Uh, we're going to pretend that it's uh, it's the, the vegetables are softened. The one thing I do like because I'm using a carrot, I usually buy or grow carrot here. Um, you always have tops, you know, carrot tops and everybody does the same thing. They throw them out. I don't know what to do with them. What I do is I make a little bit of a, a chimichurri sauce with them. Some garlic, some chili, a little bit of acid. You could use lemon. You could use a little vinegar. You could uh, use a lot of different things for that. And then just blended it up. So it's a, a carrot top chimichurri. I'm going to take my soup. Turn this off for a second. It's got lots of great color. I love that you're using the whole part of the carrot. And you're not really wasting any part of that plant, which is great. Well, that's what we want. We want to, we want to be able to use everything. And then again, I'm going to take uh, 
tiny bit because again, I want to use everything. Celery leaves give that real light texture to it. So I'm just gonna put a little garnish to that in the middle. I'm gonna take my chimney, I'm gonna go around it, to get a little bit of flavor. And I got some wild chives that I had sitting around the garden this morning that's still living, which is nice. <laughs> and there we go, quick and simple three sister soup. It looks amazing. Now I'm gonna be a little different because this is a rustic version of it. So now we're gonna go into uh, something a little different. I've taken that same soup and we're gonna elevate it a bit. You know, we always want we always want textures, we want flavors, but we also want variety. So we don't want the same soup all the time. So I've taken that same soup and I've actually blended it. This is the roasted butternut squash, some carrots, some celery, some onion, a little garlic, roasted it all down and I've pureed it. Really simple, got great flavor to it. I'm gonna take a pan, kick up my heat again. Gonna put a, a little bit of oil in the pan. You could use beef fat, you could use tallow, anything you happen to have on. I love the blended soup because my kids are not a fan of um, black beans and that's a great way to sneak in your added protein, added fiber into your soup. Perfect. Exactly. And you know what? It gives you that, that little bump of protein that you're going to yes. need. And it gives that, that sustenance that you're going to need to last through the day. And that's why I like it. And again, it's a soup that'll, that'll sit in the fridge or you can just reheat it. Super simple. So all I've done is put a little bit of little roasted corn in the pan. I could put a little bit of black bean because again, I want that color. I'm going back to my pole beans. I'm going to put a couple of those in there because I want some texture. And I'm just going to give that a little saute. I'm going to move over my rustic soup off to the side here. Bring in my new plate. Sorry, I'm off camera for a second here. I'm going to take my blended soup that I had from before. Again, just butternut squash. We're going to put that into the bottom of the bowl. You hear the sizzle? Oh, yes. That means we're really cooking today. <laughs> and Chef Brian, you said this is the soup that you can make, you know, at the beginning of the week and it can last you the whole week. So this is a great exactly. soup for even like lunch preps for those busy so people out there. This is the original meal prep. <laughs> Think about that. We're going back to the basics today. So I've taken a little saute of everything. So it's got a little, some color to it. It still has its crunch. We're just gonna take that. We're gonna drop it right in the middle. So now I got my roasted butternut squash on the outside. I got my garnish down the middle. I've taken, remember those black beans that I had? I've taken a little bit of black bean, again with a tiny bit of stock. I've cooked them down with some seasoning. Let's steal the fork here. And I just blended it. Because again, I want something different. So I'm gonna take that, I'm just gonna ring that around the outside. Wow. So then we've basically taken that same soup and we've elevated a bit. So now it went from rustic, hey, hanging out at lunch, need something quick, to now it could be a dinner, put a little crostini or something on the top, or some bannock on the side, and now we're cooking dinner. Quick and simple. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, with the same ingredients, just by being creative, you can really kind of diversify your uh, dish there. That's great. And it's, it's, giving you, uh, it's giving you variety, but you're not spending... A whole lot of time trying to find different ingredients it's just a yes. different way of looking at it yes that's great yeah just giving me lots of ideas i've got my lunch ideas and my dinner party ideas all with <laughs> one recipe here <laughs> amazing thank so you so much our, so that's our first first dish done quick and simple amazing the three sisters stew great yes. 
Well, we're going to go for a quick break and a quick commercial, and then we'll kind of come back for another wonderful recipe demonstrated by Chef Brent here. Looking for staff training? Food cost advantages? Interested in robotics for your business? Cisco Advantage features best-in-class companies to make sure you have the right tools to optimize your business and increase traffic. We have negotiated exclusive Cisco discounts with business partners to help you compete, stay in the game, and focus on what you do best. Our collection of offerings includes specialized services, technology, tools and personalized consultations designed to make you more efficient, increase your profits, and make it easier for you to manage your operations. Visit cisco.ca or speak with your Cisco representative to learn more. All right, we're back. Um, I hope you enjoyed the first recipe. Now I can't wait for what you've got in store for us for the second recipe. So what do you have there, Chef Brent? So second recipe, we're going down a little different road. This is, uh, we're going to elevate things a tiny, tiny bit. So one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite, favorite things is protein. I love my meat. It's uh, I'm a carnivore at heart. So today we're doing a little bison. Oh, now when I think, uh, when I think indigenous food, that's usually one of the things that I think of besides salmon on the West coast, I go bison in the, in the, the central part of our, of our country, you know, and then I go into maybe a little bit of fowl or, uh, maybe, uh, back to a, like a cod type thing when you go East coast. So I've taken some bison strip loin. And to me, this super exciting. I love it. Um, I brought it up to temperature. So when you, when you go to cook something, you don't want to cook it right out of the fridge. It tends to, uh, to chase the, chase the color of the meat right into it. So it, it's a little tougher. I've let it warm up. I'm going to do something a little different. I've taken, uh, some spirit bear coffee. This is something that, uh, that I got introduced to a couple of months ago. It's an, uh, an indigenous company that, uh, that has created some coffee rubs and I take that and I don't drink coffee. So I have to think culinary wise. And to me, coffee, a little bit of salt, some pepper, some, uh, some cumin, some warm spices. And I just built a rub. That sounds amazing. I've never yeah. thought of that way to use coffee grounds before. So that's another very creative way of using your ingredients. So when it comes to coffee, coffee has got a lot of bitterness to it. Mm -hmm. So when you're making a rub with it, you want to, you want to balance it a bit. So that, that little bit of bitterness, we're going to put some, uh, some warmer spices in it, a little bit more seasoning, a little more salt kind of thing, just to kind of give it some balance. And it's going to go really well with that bison. That bison's got lots of iron in it. It's great protein, higher level than, a, than beef. It's leaner than beef. So we're just going to take that rub. We're going to pour it onto our, our strip loin, making sure we cover everything. I've got a pan that's heating up on the, on the stove top here. Normally, because I'm, I wouldn't be on TV. I would, uh, I would let this sit pack up. They call it for 10, 15 minutes kind of thing. And, uh, that rubble stick a little bit better, but we're going to work it this way. Take it and we're just going to drop it. I can it right hear the pan. sizzle. Then yeah, that's good. That means, that means we're yes. doing something right. <laughs> just going to quickly wash my hands. If you're ever around Ontario, I'm going to have you come over to my house and cook for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's way too cold out there for me. What? <laughs> I'm just saying the Okanagan, you know, it's uh, it's t-shirt and sandals weather. So I'm, uh, I'm quite happy here. <laughs> well, come in the summertime. It'll be, you'll feel right at home. <laughs> All right. That could be a deal. I, I could do that. So as you can, as you can hear that sizzle, it's starting to get a crust. I don't want to touch it too, too much, but I also don't want to let it sit on that, on that crust for too long because what's going to happen is you're going to burn or scorch that spice. So what I'll do is I'll keep turning it. 
every 30, 40 seconds kind of thing. We're just building that flavor, building that crust. And what it's doing is it's, it's warming that steak slowly. We're not putting a lot of pressure onto it. We're not putting a lot of, a lot of abuse to that steak because we want it to cook nice and slow. Yeah, I think this has just been so great to be able to celebrate Nutrition Month and tie it into Indigenous um, cuisine because this is something I think we're all in need to be more educated on. So thank you so much, Chef Brent. Like it's, um, I know I'm on my own personal journey to learn more about the Indigenous um, culture and community. And I think this is a great segment that we're doing today. You know, I, I agree. And I, I, uh... I didn't know a whole lot about it either. And I, I think it's been a fun journey learning more and more about it. Again, I was I was the type of person, okay, you know, salmon, halibut, I get it. But the amount of foraging and ingredients that are local to the areas like wild sages and dandelions and fern and things like that, it's, it's fun to learn. I'm just gonna turn this down a tiny bit. Now, I would normally keep flipping and flipping and flipping. As you can see, it's got a nice crust to it. I'm actually gonna drop it into a pan and I'm gonna put it into a slow oven to finish cooking because I have one that's already done. So now I have a nice hot pan. It's still got those spices. They're not scorched because we took our time. I've actually got some, some wild rice. So this is, Again, a little bit of a different process. I don't cook my wild rice, I bloom it. So what I mean by blooming is I, late last night or early last night, I put uh, warm water in this, put a lid on it, put it on my back counter and let it sit. So no heat, no cooking, no nothing. Just put some water in there and let it sit. And it'll naturally open up. Because it's a grass, it'll absorb the water it gets tender. And the best thing about that is it doesn't lose the nutrients. You're keeping all of that flavor, all of that nutrients from that wild rice right inside of it. That's so interesting. As a person that eats a lot of rice, I've actually never prepared rice that way. It's almost like overnight oats, but overnight rice in a way. Exactly. Yeah. And it, I think the texture is way better. It must have like a nice bite to it if you were to bloom your rice overnight. It does have a little chew to it, but I find when you cook, when you cook wild rice, what happens is that there's so much of it that gets overcooked and then there's some of it that doesn't get cooked. So you got too many textures and sometimes it's a little off-putting because all of a sudden you're getting a piece of wild rice that's really, really crunchy. With this blooming, everything stays nice texture. It's got a little chew to it. And again, like I said, the one thing I do like about the nutrients stay in it. That's amazing. And I actually didn't know this, but I think in Canada, we actually grow a lot of our wild rice here locally. So if you're, if you're lucky enough to live on the, on the East coast of the world, right around you, actually in, uh, in Winnipeg, um, there's a company called floating leaf where we buy this from. They've been harvesting wild rice for hundreds of years, or close to a hundred years using indigenous methods and actually with indigenous people. It's a naturally wild rice, meaning that they don't plant it. They don't, uh, they don't cultivate it. This is a natural product grows in the, in lakes. It, uh, is, it's really, really interesting how they harvest it. They actually used to go along with canoes and they would smack the side of the, of the boat with this, with a wooden pile and wow. the wild rice would fall into the boat. So what fell back into the lake grew for next year. What fell into the boat, they harvested. Wow, that's like the ultimate sustainable cycle, right? It is. It was. Uh, I got. I was lucky enough a couple of years ago to actually go visit Floating Leaf. The family is absolutely amazing. Um, we got to learn so much about wild rice that I never knew, and I watched. Uh, I watched them harvest it. I watched them toast it, and. It was absolutely probably one of the most funnest times learning about a product. And uh, you know what? I, uh, I'm very, very proud to say that in Canada, you know, getting a true wild rice, 
is something that I think is very, very important. So what I've done, I'm into my same pan, I put a little bit of carrot, some onion, a little bit of a uh, little bit of celery, and just sauteed it up a little bit. I'm going to take some wild cranberries that have been dried. I'm going to drop that in there. It's going to give a little bit of sweetness. Remember when we went back to our rub on our steak? We yes. had that bitterness. So now we're going to add a little bit of sweetness to that dish. So we're going to counterbalance things, give us our, our little bit of a flavor. And I'm just warming the cranberries up. I'm using cranberries because I'm on the West Coast. We grow a lot of cranberry here. Um, you could use other berries in this for sure. Um, if you move a little farther east, you know, we could go into Hassa berries here in the Okanagan. You could move into uh, a Saskatoon berry. If you're the Regina, Saskatoon kind of area, middle of the middle of our of our nation kind of thing. Or if you're from Ontario, you're very proud to say that you're a, a, a wild blueberry lover. <laughs> I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> so I've taken that, I've sauteed it down a little bit. I'm gonna take my bloomed rice. I'm just gonna throw that right into there. The color is amazing in this dish as well. And definitely, there's definitely a very diverse uh, flavor profile going on. Again, we got we got lots of nutrients with our vegetables. Mm -hmm. Everything's something that you could grow here within, you know, a couple hundred miles. It's all within our nation. That's what sustainability is all about. You know, our our food culture here in Canada, we grow so many things that we're lucky. You know, there's there's other parts of the world that that can't. You know, I'll look at some of the Nordic countries that are a little, you know, back in the day were really, really tough to grow things. They had a tougher time. You get a lot of pickled vegetables, a little salted mm -hmm. vegetable, things like that. We're here. We're lucky enough to have this stuff. It's amazing. And so much color on our plate as well. That's another thing, you know, eating, we eat with our eyes as well as our mouth, right? So all of our senses are stimulated here. I think you're correct on that. I, everybody's got to eat with their with their eyes first. Oh, yes. I'm putting a little bit of seasoning into this. And remember, my the bloomed rice is already done. So it's all we're doing is warming it back up. The vegetables are starting to get a, a little tender to it. I'm just going to check the seasoning on it a bit. You've got my dinner uh, menu planned out. I'm going to do the rustic three sister soup and then I've got this to follow up. <laughs> I love it. So we're going to go back to that carrot top chimichurri. Again, I want something that's got a little acid to it. Counterbalancing that sweetness, that bitterness. We're just going to make a little bit of a, you got to be fancy. We're going to turn that off. I think the toughest part is to make that perfect circle that you just did there. Oh, it's many years of training. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I went to culinary school for. <laughs> I'm just going to lay that wild rice right down the middle. I'm going to take my steak. And because I want it to uh, have a presentation to it, I'm just going to knock the ends off a little bit. And I'm going to cut it right down the middle. So I got this right in like that. Wow, oh, that looks so good. We're going to put a little garnish on there. Some of our chive. I got some sage. Now I'm lucky enough that I had a sage plant that actually survived the winter. So we're going to put a little piece of sage in it. I got some crispy sage that, uh, I roasted the strip loin with, and there we go. That's a Amazing. spirit bear crusted bison strip loin, little wild rice peel off, and wild or carrot top chimichurri. Amazing! Thank you so much. Look at that! Wow. It's almost okay. like I've done that before. 
First time. First time. First time. Right? I love it. Awesome. I think we're due for another commercial break and then we'll see you right back. Hey there, Jeffrey Root, Culinary Innovation for Pasta Montana. Want to show you real quick a fantastic new pasta dish that you can serve. Center the plate, get you great revenue. I have fire roasted peppers stuffed with our Didalini pasta, fresh ground lamb, pine nuts, pomegranate, onion and garlic. It's tossed in a tomato broth. Great center of the plate. I've got plenty more ideas. Let me know how I can support you. Thank you again. Well, thank you everybody for joining us on this special edition of SVK. And thanks again to Chef Brent for sharing your amazing recipes and all of your stories and wisdom. And just to recap, we started off with a three sister soup done two ways, a rustic version and a refined recipe with the roasted and blended squash, a grilled corn and black bean pureed, followed by this amazing dish in front of you, which is a seared spirit bear coffee rub bison strip loin paired with a cranberry and wild rice pilaf and carrot top chimichurri. If you want to learn more about Nutrition Month, please follow Cisco Canada on our social media and follow our Healthcare Senior Living page on LinkedIn. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to join us this Thursday, March 24th, where we'll be diving further deeper into this topic with Holly Fortier, who is an amazing speaker. She has the, quite the resume. She is an Indigenous awareness trainer, filmmaker, actress, and advocate. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in, and happy Monday. Thanks, everybody. Have yourself a great day.